Welcome back to Track Loader Parts informational video series, Tech Tips. Today, we're going to be talking with you about the 10 inch bogey axle assembly. Now this bogey axle is primarily found on your RC85 and RC100 ASV machines, as well as some PT models. And then on your Caterpillar models, you'll find this on the 267, 277, and 287, the straight model and the B series. Now, one of the difficult problems that our customers have is determining which axle assembly is actually on your machine. You've decided that the axle is bad and you wanna rebuild it, but what internal pieces do you need? Well, it's hard to tell without taking the whole thing apart. Or there are some distinct differences between the axles that if you know what to look for, you can tell what parts you're going to need without having to take the axle apart. So let's look at these axles and figure out how to determine the differences between each one. This first axle is what we call a single bearing assembly. That is because there is one ball bearing on either side of the axle shaft. Now this axle will be found on your RC85 and your 267 models from the factory. Now this axle is less expensive than the other two. So if you have other models, it's possible that someone who owned the machine previously went in a cheaper direction and bought this axle and put it on the machine. So just because your machine isn't an RC85 or a 267, you could still have this axle on your machine. Now, you really don't know if it's a single bearing model unless you take the complete axle apart. But if you measure the distance or the diameter of the axle hub, this axle is three and one quarter inch in diameter. It's the only axle that is three and one quarter inch. So if you can take a tape measure and roughly guess, or you can use a micrometer if you wanna be more exact, if you get three and a quarter, you know that you have to order the single bearing parts. Additionally, this axle is equipped with one outside stiffening plate. The stiffener plate, or the outside axle plate, goes right here on the front of the wheel to hold the outer wheels on. Now we get to the very similar looking axle of double bearing axle assembly. Called a double bearing assembly because there are two ball bearings on each side of the axle housing. Also, the internals of this axle include a retaining ring, and this axle uses two outside stiffening plates, a thick one and then a sheet metal looking plate that both go together to go on the outside of the front wheels or the outer wheels. Now these two axle assemblies look almost identical, but again, remember, the measurement of the hub is the key difference. So if you take your tape measure or your micrometer and you measure the diameter of the axle hub right here, you will find this axle to be three and a half inches in diameter. So if it is three and a half inches in diameter, then you know that you'll have the double bearing axle assembly. And these are the parts that you'll need to order to rebuild your axle. Now there is a catch to the three and a half inch measurement here. There is another axle that is three and a half inches in diameter. And that's this axle over here. Now this axle is three and a half inches, but the differences are more easily spotted here than in the other two. This axle has a metal face seal, or it's a dome shaped cap on the outside. You'll see here, both the plates are covering the rubber seal. This plate will leave the seal exposed because it has a larger hole in the center of it. You simply, to identify this axle, need to look at the outside seal, and if it is a dome-shaped metal cover rather than the plate, then you know that this is what we have, this is what is called the metal face seal axle assembly. This axle assembly does not use a ball bearing, but rather uses a tapered roller bearing. And instead of having a rubber covered seal, like these two axles, 
It has what's called a metal face seal. Here's your dome-shaped cap that goes in the front. These O-rings then press into the seal assemblies. And then they ride inside the axle as such, creating a metal seal. Now, if you have this axle, I would recommend replacing it and not rebuilding it because it can be rather difficult to remove the pieces of this axle assembly as a cutting torch is required to remove all of the pieces that you see in here. You would rather opt to go for one of these axle assemblies that will be easier to rebuild in the future or just replace this whole axle assembly if you want to keep the metal face seal design. The metal face seal was designed to be lubricated with oil, where these two are grease lubricated. Now, there's not a grease port on these axles. And in our next video, we'll discuss the benefits of having a greasable axle. But it's important to note that if you do not have a grease fitting on these, do not pump them with a grease gun. Don't fill them with grease. If you pressurize these axle assemblies, you're going to blow the lip out of the back of these seals. And then the seal's going to fail, and then the grease is going to leak out, and then you're gonna have an axle assembly that's no good. So do not fill these with grease unless you specifically buy the greasable axle assembly. Now, I hope you've learned the differences between the three axles. If you have any questions, you can always give us a call at Trackloader Parts, and we'd be happy to walk you through figuring out which axle is on your machine. Of course, you can order parts online from us at any time, day or night, but we're always glad to speak with you as well. Thank you for joining me on this informational video series. I hope to speak to you again soon. Thank you.